the mix. I want to talk about some resources that you might want to consider primarily for scheduling and tracking things. Uh, one is Volunteer Spot. It's a piece of software you can download to your computers. I think it's free, if I recall right. And what's nice is it will keep track of volunteers that you may want to use for different assignments. It will have a rotation system on there. So you know when somebody's being overused or underused or when their turn is next. And it can also uh, tie a person with their talents. So it's a nice little piece of software you might want to consider. But not for a long time. It's an old, it's an old software. Another one is Ebyte. A lot of people use Ebyte. Ebyte is, uh, I think that is free. It works with email. It's really nice. And let's say you have 20, 50 people you want to invite to go somewhere. You can send them an Ebyte and send RSVPs. It'll let you set limits of how many people are going, uh, and how many RSVPs you can receive back. Uh, again, very easy to use, very intuitive. Uh, you don't need to know anything about software to run the device. It's really nice. Next to a little bit more, one's Eventbrite and then Silent Genius. Eventbrite is used exclusively in uh, Sun City at uh, uh, right now by their computer clubs. Eventbrite allows to do charging, it allows you to set fees for certain things, it allows you to keep track of it, you can refund on it, uh, it'll pay credit cards, uh, it'll, it, it's a real nice uh, piece of software for setting up events, and uh, it does total scheduling on there as well, and a lot of people will use that pretty satisfactorily. I'm not going over these real big because we're going to have some of this stuff on a new website and a new, in the community in the future, so. Uh, Sign up Genius, which shop currently uses this. It's a very, it's not as intuitive. Uh, if you're going to use it, you may want to speak to Mr. Hellman at the uh, 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 wood shop. He set up a beautiful schedule. Like it's really nice, really comprehensive. This is when you want to assign. If you're going to have like different positions that need to work, and you need to schedule them and schedule people to tell you how many people to put with, how many leaders. And it has a lot of comprehensive uh, things to use on it. Like any software, more does the RV I work at. Uh, Google Forms surveys with analysis. Google Forms are nice to use for about three different reasons. Number one, all Google Forms, not only Forms, but Google Docs, Google Sheets, that's what Forms is actually. It's just hang over of it. Whenever you do something, if you are collaborating with somebody, you can make a change, and they can make a change at the same time, and you'll see each other's change. So it's really the Google uh, uh, suite, as far as the office type suite, which is the docs and the sheets, are really nice to use for that reason. A lot of times they're using schools, so they use where people are working across the country from each other. <laughs> One person will type it in, and the other person will see exactly what they typed in the space. And it saves exactly as you're typing. There's no file save or anything like that. Or uh, call up just to you name a file, you open it up, whatever you do, whatever you type in there, immediately saves. So somebody else goes on in, in the same form across the country, and you don't know if you see whatever you have done. Now, the Google, Google Form Survey with analysis, we're using the computer club. And surveys are really, really nice. We didn't pay much attention to them much before this year. Last year we started into it. But we have found out, we have what we call a programming committee in our club where they sit down together and say, what will the people like? Well, who's making that decision? The people are getting the least in most cases. And so what we started doing is, number one, you can survey the running club. So raise your hands and you're like this, raise your hands and you're like that, and do we pay attention to that? The second thing we do is an actual survey after each presentation. And do you want that presentation repeated? Do you not? Do you like the speaker? Do you like, uh, you know, was the, the sound system good enough, things along that line. And we use this survey in the programming committee. And what we found out is when we don't pay attention to us, when we pay attention to the surveys, we get some pretty good results. And uh, we had, we took one of earlier, uh, about two months ago, rich hands. And what we found out was what they rated as number one, had the biggest attendance. And we didn't think we'd pull any attendance at all when we were setting up the program. So the people really know what they want when you pay attention to what they're telling you want. It really, really works. And the last four or five presentations we have come across really good because they're listed very high on these surveys. 
So we use the uh, Google Forms for surveying. We also use Ready to Hand. And we also, but what we do, people don't like to fill out surveys. How many here do not like to fill out surveys? Exactly, I'm the same way. So what we tell our club is, okay, at the end of the month, if you put your name on a survey, we're going to give you a gift card for 25 bucks. All of a sudden, a lot of surveys are going to And it does work. Uh, so it, it does seem to have some uh, value. Okay. Uh, Lifelong Learning Club and Computer Club. Uh, they use a pendant <laughs> sign-in that Steve Larry wrote. And it's using, he uses uh, the Mac product, but you can use it on Excel, any spreadsheet program. What's really unique about this, it uses four different basic spreadsheets. One is the attendance, the other is the HOA database sheet, the third one is your club roster, and then the final one makes it compile the metric to it. And it tells you exactly how many people are attending, uh, and who's paid to do this, who, who has it. The way it looks is the attendance sheet is when a person comes in, the left wing scan, or left wing column, is scan in their ID card. And what this ID card does, it winds up looking over into the next column and matching it against the FSR database. The C1 RDA valid resident. Uh, and also, that will wind up extracting the names from the database, slapping the first name. And, and then also it'll let us know if they pay their dues or not, or if they uh, need to pay their dues. And even if it pays twice, we can get a reminder on there, or if they haven't paid before, they've been there three, three times according to our bylaws, taking attendance as a guest, then it lets us know that uh, uh, they, they do need to pay their dues at that point. Another interesting thing is duplicates. There are people sometimes that wind up paying dues twice, don't realize it, I've done it before, and it'll let the person know at the attendance table that hey, you pay these dues two times or you can do some money back. The HOA database, they send it across, and they get this out every three weeks, and what it has is the residence number, last name, first name, and then put together very simple, nothing complex or anything like that. In, in some cases, you, know, you can have up to five ID cards with one individual, <laughs> for some sake. Uh, we're not sure why that occurs, how it occurred, people lose them, we don't know. Uh, this won't happen in the system because they're doing that totally difference. It can be based off your driver's license. And uh, so people won't be able to get multiple cards even if they need them for money. The other thing it will do is it gives you the club roster. And again, it shows you pay your dues amount. But this is a nice part, metrics. It uh, has a date on there. It has who the presenter was for that week, uh, the title of the course, total attendees. And we look at that column very seriously. And also how many guests came in, uh, how many club members, how many paid members uh, each week. We use this a lot. And what we do is sort it from high to low for the number of people that attend. And that does help us program future programs. Because we know what the people are interested in. If Leon comes here to give a presentation, we're going to have 500 people. And there's building not big enough. It's that simple. So, Bob uh, Fowler, when he does his security stuff, he's the same way. Maybe not again, we get 10 people, we're happy. People to death. Uh, training resources. Uh, there is private mentoring within the community. Uh, the Lake House uh, front desk has a list of all the vendors with about anything you want to know about computers. Uh, the other thing is also the FCCO website, community page has that document. We update this annually, and uh, we try to make sure that there's something for everybody on there. Because a lot of times I'll get emails to teach training me, and there's no way I would have the time to train people in this community. So I don't know that much myself. So, uh, we do have a basic one-on-one -on -one computer skills that are listed on the mentor list. And all new website training is going to be scheduled by the education committee and their members. Uh, Lake House resource room, uh, computers, we have five computers in, they're brand new, put in earlier this year, the last, the last year, and they seem to be all working right now. Don't pull plugs out of those computers, especially one on the left, because that controls all the, the other four. 
And uh, people sometimes get mad at trying to pull the plug and plug it back in and they can actually mess up the network doing that. Courses offered by mentors and scheduled for this group here. You want to make sure if you're going to be doing a lot of communication, somebody knows how to operate either PowerPoint or a similar program. Uh, you, uh, people have Macs use different program, that's fine, whatever you want to use. But make sure you have the ability to give a good presentation. Publisher programs, you can make posters and announcements. And the computer club is willing to train people on these. If we get a big enough group, we'll have a full class session. We had two last year. Google Forms and Forum Surveys, we can show you how to set that up. And other things that are listed on the mentors list. Technology, don't expect everything to work always. Uh, try hookups a day at least before you're going to give your presentation if you're going to do something. Because it doesn't always work the way you think it will. And that way you call somebody you need help at the front desk tell them, hey, this isn't working or that isn't working. Uh, and sometimes it's just not being able to hook up your specific computer correctly. You may have a setting that needs to be changed in there that people can help you with. Uh, there are backup sound and protection systems available. 